Our ancestors believed that humanity would never make a major impact on the Earth's abundant resources. Whilst the resources found on our planet are diverse and plentiful, it is now apparent that they are in fact vulnerable too. The specific definition of natural resources can vary greatly. It could encompass any naturally occurring features of the world that are beneficial to humans. However, some definitions restrict it to those which present a material gain or an economic opportunity. Natural resources can be categorized in a number of ways, with the most prominent being renewable, those that can be replaced within the timescale of a human lifetime, versus non-renewable, those resources that cannot. Other categorizations include by sector of use, living versus non-living, or by their area of origin, land, water, or air. It is easy to take the ground beneath our feet for granted, but one particularly overlooked part of the environment we inhabit is the soil. Clearly, soil is crucial for our food system, storing nutrients and water and providing a structure for plants and other life to grow in. It is also responsible for filtering our water, preventing flooding and, as the largest terrestrial store of carbon, it is crucial in the fight against climate change. Due to the slow erosion process required to create soil, it is a non-renewable resource. In the rocks of the earth are all the minerals and metals that are mined, processed and manufactured into the products and buildings that surround us. These materials are extracted in epic proportions, with most of this used in construction and requiring huge amounts of energy for its extraction and use. Amongst these subterranean resources, we find fossil fuels, namely coal, oil and natural gas, all key examples of non-renewable resources. These have countless uses in our current society, including burning them for heat, transport or to generate electricity. Additionally, around 5% of oil is used to produce various types of plastics. Arguably, the most important part of our world is the life that occupies it. A huge part of this comes from plants, making up about 80% of all life by mass. Plants provide a huge value to humans. Benefits include timber and fuel from trees, fruit, vegetables, grains, nuts and seeds for food, and, of course, the production of oxygen. Less appreciated uses exist in the production of fabric, such as cotton or hemp, the derivation of medicines, and the regulation of city temperatures. Similarly, our global society could not function without animals. Since the domestication of sheep at around 10,000 BC, we have largely depended upon livestock for nourishment via meat, dairy, and eggs as well as other goods that they can provide, such as wool, leather, and honey. There are now over 70 billion chickens, pigs, cows, and sheep on Earth, around 10 for every human. These livestock animals dwarf the wild population, with 15 times more captive mammals than wild ones. It is worth noting that other microscopic forms of life, such as fungi and bacteria, also serve important purposes. Humanity also depends on ocean life for food, with more than 1.5 billion people getting 20% of their protein from fish. Over 3 billion people rely on the sea for their livelihoods, mostly through fishing and tourism, putting the value of marine and coastal resources at over 3 trillion US dollars, or 5% of global GDP. Another obscure but significant ocean resource has been horseshoe crab blood, which is the only known natural source of a substance capable of detecting dangerous bacteria that could make vaccines and other medication deadly. Water in its many forms can also be used to produce renewable electricity from hydroelectric dams that utilize the energy of rivers and elevated lakes, to tidal and wave generation that use the natural movements of the ocean. Access to fresh water may seem a given. However, around 97% of the Earth's water is in fact salty, and of the water that is not, 98% is locked up in glaciers and groundwater, emphasizing the need to protect what little we have on the surface. The evaporation of surface water into clouds, followed by it raining and returning to the ocean via rivers, is known as the water cycle. This process is crucial to replenishing clean water supplies. Clouds are a key part of this, with a single cloud able to contain 500 tonnes of water. Our atmosphere is the last layer of protection between us and the vacuum of space, and although 480 kilometres thick, when viewed on a planetary scale, this is almost nothing. Within it are over 5 quadrillion tonnes of gas, mostly nitrogen and oxygen. These atmospheric gases have many uses. Nitrogen is a fundamental element in fertiliser, argon is used in welding, and helium is crucial to many medical procedures such as MRI scans. One especially important part of the atmosphere is the ozone layer, found between 15 and 30 kilometres above the Earth's surface. This protects the inhabitants of Earth from harmful ultraviolet radiation emitted by the Sun. The magnetosphere, a magnetic field around the Earth created by its metallic core, also contributes to our protection from UV, as well as from solar winds. In addition to nourishing plants and consequently the rest of the animal food chain, energy from the sun can be converted into heat and electricity through photovoltaic solar panels. Similarly, the wind, an effect of the sun's uneven warming of the atmosphere, can generate power via on and offshore wind turbines. To recap, the Earth has masses to offer, including the land and sea life on it, materials within it, and atmosphere around it. Consequently, human society draws food, water, building materials, clothing, power, and more from our planet. 
Many questions arise when considering whether humans are entitled to all or any of these resources, and the need to preserve them has become increasingly clear. Check out our next video to see what dangers the Earth's resources currently face.